A market is a collection of opinion and the biggest players have the biggest vote in that particular market. So if we're talking about, say, Vodafone, um, the biggest shareholders that are trading in and out and rebalancing their portfolios, they'll be reflecting that opinion. So it is only then opinion on all known information, um, bearing in mind that the biggest players will stay very close to management and want to know as, as much about plans and uh, in, so they should be fairly well informed and it should be fairly well analysed. So I think it's the best mechanism we have of valuation and the fact that it is adjusting. However, obviously as you're aware then you get extreme sentiment days when the markets are selling off brutally. Um, a very good company that in the long run won't be t too particularly affected and when that sentiment wears off you then get the sentiment and the emotionality of people all leaving or exiting the market in fear. Um, so at those extreme points you tend to have a less good poll. In other words people overreact both to the bullish side and to the bearish side on extreme news. Um, what about broker recommendations? Do they, fund, do, do, do they fundamentally move stock prices do you think? The big players when they give an upgrade or a downgrade can um, move equities certainly. You can't deny that um, and they do sway institutional opinion and when they're working on a report they, uh, you know, the release of that note is supposed to I think largely be under quarantine until such time as they release that point so you get a sudden you know we are buying it they don't during the course of the give too much of an indication of their thinking so yes it is it is a news driven event that somebody who's, who apparently is applying a great degree of fundamental analysis has come to a certain opinion and is skilled enough to do so. That said, we've heard many broker notes that have been absolutely dismal three weeks before, and this comes to the, I cite this example when we talk fundamental and technical, why fundamentalists do need a degree of technical. There was three weeks before Enron went bust, there were broker notes uh, putting out saying Enron was a buy. Um, and of course there was wholesale fraud that the fundamentalists would never have had access to because they didn't have the balance sheets, the off-balance sheet items, a technical person would have seen that there was insider selling on a massive scale. The market was going down on massive volume. You never buy a chart where the, the candles are red, long and sinking fast on huge volume. You just don't buy that. It's simple as that. No one would have bought that. So that's the value of technical analysis. We strayed slightly into a different option, but there was a broken note three weeks, right up to three weeks before from a major institutional investment bank. Do you think they have a hidden agenda? I don't always think that the purest intentions have always existed. We've seen plenty enough of emails about pump and dump, you know, yeah, this is a buy, and then internal emails saying that it's a pile of crap. Um, I don't think the industry serves itself at all by doing this. And this is why I'm actually even being quite comfortable being contrary broker notes on, if I have my setup and the technical uh, move, I actually uh, and I have a contrary opinion, I actually get a little bit excited now where before I used to get nervous, then I was indifferent. Now I actually see it as counter-indicative and potentially I have plenty of scope to believe that they're wrong or that they might have an another gender. Uh, but I don't over-fascinate on it.